I decided to make a video for the air conditioning on micron gauges. Unfortunately, I just messed this up because I cannot find my adapter to come off this micron gauge because I wanted to put it in line right here so I can isolate off the hose from the system and show you what happens when I disconnect the hose and you have just a micron gauge at this point reading through here without drawing vacuum at this point but drawing it from the other end. I have made another video on that. But in this case, I'm gonna show you, here there's a micron gauge located inside the manifold gauge, right in the center of the manifold. It reads between these two points right here. And so as you can see, we're at 777 to 80 something. We're going back and forth right there at this point. But then I stuck another micron gauge in line Let's follow this out. I'm drawing vacuum right here. And I'm coming right here. And in the middle of this refrigerant charging hose, this is refrigerant charging hose. This is not a vacuum rated high rate hose. This is a hose that anybody would use that has been exposed to ester oil or PAG oil. Nobody's almost doing uh, mineral oil anymore. And your rubber hoses not made for extreme vacuum. So what do we have here? We have 57 microns with this micron meter right here. At this T, taking at this point right here. Then at this point, this is a silicone hose. This is rated for deeper vacuum. This is a three quarter hose coming right down to this point, right off this uh, vacuum pump. This vacuum pump is rated to go down to three microns, not 30 microns, 20 or 15 microns, but three microns. But then why do we only have 57 microns right here? Because this hose is connected and this is your losses in this hose. And I actually have this turned off right here. So we're only reading vacuum inside this hose and this hose combined. And we have roughly almost 60 microns. If I were to have a valve right here and I actually shut it off, I know this drops down to 30 microns and it would only be reading from this micron gauge through this half of the valve. If I had a shut off valve where I just connected here, I know this hose dips down below 30 microns like that really fast. So from 30 or a little less to about 56 right now is all the losses of this rubber refrigerant charging hose right here. They're not rated for vacuum. Then, if we look up here at this 900 microns, it's only coming from one vacuum hose, and this is uh, just a oh, yellow jacket vacuum hose going to a field piece 8 CFM vacuum pump. And it's only capable of, say, roughly around 900 grams. You know, it's hovering right around in that bar. But it is open to the systems. Both these are attached and are depressed into the system. So if I had this, if I had this micron gauge hooked up and I could actually get it hooked up, especially if I could hook it up right here, you would probably see it's about, say, 1,700 microns at this point. But when I come to this point and I'd attach it right here, maybe it's a 1,400 microns. Then here we just dip down below 800 microns. And here we're at 56 microns. But that's with this valve closed. Now let's watch what happens. Okay, let's look back up here. 600, or I mean uh, 700, 800. It's hovering right around that 800 point. Let's open up this vacuum pump to it. Now I'm opening it up. I just added a second vacuum pump. Oh, I heard second vacuum pump makes no difference because somebody's seen it on a video. So let's come down here. Now remember, I just lost some capability. We just went from 56 microns up to near 100 microns right there because we just opened this line to the rest of this system. And this is coming down faster now because we have, of course, in a laboratory on part when everything is perfect, they say two vacuum pumps doesn't make a difference. Well, it makes a difference, especially if, because you're now down to the molecular flow, you're way down here where you're not flowing volume. You're trying to pull mass. It's the power. 
and this is Kate rated down to three microns. It does more than just a regular vacuum pump. Now, let's see if we could go a little farther and I'm going to turn off that valve right there and that low side valve over there and we'll only be pulling a vacuum inside our refrigerant hoses, nothing more. Look at where our vacuum is up to. 360 remember this was at 56 when i had this isolated and this line turned off and we we're only drawing vacuum through there so now let's go like this that's closed let's close this one okay now they're too close now we're not drawing from the system See what a difference it makes? Now we're only drawing vacuum in this refrigerant hose, in this refrigerant hose, and through these two sources, which one source is connected right here. And look at, we're almost back down to that, fit. remember that 56? But now we're at 63, because the only thing we have added is the volume of the manifold in between here, out these two knobs right here into these refrigerant hoses the low side and the high side that is the only difference between 56 and 63 we're not connected to the system now let's take this high side refrigerant hose out of the equation by turning it off oh, and we just uh, timed out here by turning it off at the high side and we will no longer be drawing vacuum through this hose We'll only be drawing vacuum through this hose and let's see what a, a difference it makes. Okay, here I go. I'm gonna crank it down. Boom, you see it dropping? It's dropping because you don't have the contamination of moisture that's in your rubber hose here. You don't have the flexibility of the rubber go hose. You don't have the outgassing from contaminants uh, in your saturated in your rubber hose. So we're able to drop down a little more and we have less volume. So let's knock off a little less volume over here and contaminate a hose. Let's turn off the low side hose and let's see where we're back down here. We dropped down to 60 now. So now let's come back here, see where we are. Let's cut this out. There we go. We just cut out another hose and we are dropping farther. And as we drop farther, we drop slower. We're now drawing down at a molecular. We're not flowing tons of air and it's coming out the exhaust and I think that we're literally like moving molecule by molecule. Okay, so now you get to see, we're now only drawing out of these two center ports and we're back to 56 again. So let's isolate off the yellow hose right here. Okay, now we just isolated off the yellow refrigerant hose. And we went from 56 to 55. If we go about another minute, it'll drop down another one or two microns in another minute. And it'll take time. So I hope for some of you, that's kind of like opened up that, if you take a, and my other vacuum pump has a micron uh, gauge inside the vacuum pump taking a reading right here. So say this says 56 microns right here. That is with this loss of this hose, including the loss of this rubber hose and this. If we remove this hose and we took this micron gauge and we sat it right before this hose and isolated off this hose and only took the micron reading of the vacuum pump, it might say 20 microns right here, 15 microns right here, but it's 50 microns here. And then it's a couple hundred microns up here. And then it might be like 900 microns right at this point. And then getting deep into the system, it might be 1,000 something microns there. And the one thing that will throw you off is this rubber hose. This refrigerant hose will just kill your micron readings. So let me isolate this other vacuum pump off here. So now we are only reading 
the micron gauge inside this little cylinder housing of the manifold right here. It's closed here, it's closed here. And you see how slow it goes up. There's, there's refrigerant oil trapped in there that's contaminated inside this manifold. And it's slowly clicking up. And then it'll level off and it'll stop after so long and it'll stop rising because there's no leak. But now let's add back into refrigerant hoses. Remember, we're off there, we're off there. So we'll only be reading the losses into refrigerant hoses. So here I go, I'm gonna open up one refrigerant hose and open up another refrigerant hose. See how high that's went? That's with the vacuum off. That is just the decay of moisture coming out of these hoses because these are used hoses. And this is why you would not want to use refrigerant vacuum hoses as a good indicator of a minor leak. Because you got to differentiate between what is moisture in the system and what is a leak. If you put this on the software and read a graph, and left this overnight, you might see that it comes up to like 1700 microns, 2300 microns, and then just stops and just flat lines and doesn't go any higher. Then you'd say, okay, that's the moisture contamination. Let's put it on the vacuum pump overnight and see what happens the next day. And you repeat that again, and maybe you see it only goes up to 300 microns and levels off because you dehydrated the contaminants inside the rubber refrigerant hoses which you're not supposed to use for a really good vacuum decay anyway, but you can kind of dry them out and it takes a ridiculous amount of time and energy and power. So let's open the system back up to the system by re-engaging, see we're at 1200. So now I'm gonna open it up to the system because it had time. This, this vehicle has been sitting here for like one or two months with the lines open to the atmosphere. So the ester oil or the PAG oil in this system is completely saturated with moisture. There, we went from 1200 to 1600. And there's nothing I can do with vacuum to remove this amount of moisture that has contaminated this oil. Okay, so now that's where we are. That's our system pressure. And if I left it sit overnight, I bet you this would probably go up to about 2300, 2400 and level out and just stay there because of the amount of moisture inside the system. I've done this enough times to know overnight on a micron gauge reading with software on a graph over time. So now I'm going to open up the vacuum back to it. I just opened whoop one, slowly coming down, open up two, coming down faster and it'll hit a point. See how it's jumping around? This is normal. All right, guys. Um, hope that gave you some insight of how micron gauges. I'll try to find my adapter. I have two adapters and I misplaced them both. I used it over on that large commercial job for the LG Multi V, and I haven't been able to find them uh, for the last, since the last weekend. I think I stuck them in my pocket and washed them in the laundry. All right, guys. See you guys later. Bye.